Good evening. Welcome to our North Hollywood Church of Religious Science Wednesday evening virtual service. We're so glad that you've joined us. Uh, we'll begin with our pre-service meditation. So I invite you to just get comfortable in whatever seat you are in right now. Close your eyes. Take a nice deep breath. And as you release that breath, just release any tension in the body. With the next breath, in and as you release it, Release any thoughts or concerns of what has led up to this moment. Another breath in, and as you breathe out, release any thoughts about the future, what is yet to come. And I invite you to bring your awareness to the pattern of your breath. Not trying to control it or change it, just observing it. As we focus on the breath, our attention is in the now moment, the now of every breath. It may help you to silently say to yourself, Breathing in, breathing out with each in-breath and out-breath. And your mind is very likely to wander, maybe to think about something that is yet to come, notice a sound feeling in the body and just take a moment to notice that. Just watch where the mind went, observe for a moment, maybe label it thinking, hearing, feeling. And then with great compassion, just bring the awareness back to the breath. Breathing in, breathing out.
And so gently bring your awareness back into your surroundings. You may want to just be, wiggle your toes and close your hands. And when you feel ready, bring your awareness back into the room, open your eyes. So welcome to anyone who joined us while we were in the meditation. So glad to have you with us here via Facebook Live or Zoom. Let us open up with our opening chant led by Sam and our soloist, Gia. <laughs> Thank you, Gia. So, let's come together in prayer to know that truth at an even deeper level. That truly God is in this place because God is in every place. God is the one life, the one power, the one infinite vibration of pure, unconditional love and infinite intelligence, infinite creativity, infinite good in every way we can name it, imagine it, realize it. And this one is the one out of which everything and everyone is created. It's the very life that animates my being. It is the life that animates the being of each and every person gathered for this service here in the sanctuary or joining us virtually. We are all expressions of God. And I know that we come together feeling the impulse of God for greater knowingness, a greater experience, a greater realization of itself in our lives. And so I know that this service absolutely supports that intention, that God unfolds through every part of it, that it is present in the love that we feel in coming together as a community, the connection that we share no matter where we are, I know that we feel it is the love of all those who are of service. I know we are uplifted by it through our music this evening, through Sam and Gia. I open myself to being that vessel through which the divine message comes through, that it is a message that I, along with everyone else gathered here, has come to hear and know and experience together. And so I'm giving thanks right here, right now, for all the ways that that divine essence at the center of our being reveals itself to us and through us this evening and the healing that occurs through our time together. And in gratitude, I just release this word knowing it is so, I let it be, and so it is. Together we say, Amen. And so I invite you to please join me in saying the Lord's Prayer. 
our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you, Gia. Mm. So, my topic this evening is the power of silence.
can you feel it? <laughs> Blair double dared me to go for a full three minutes. Sorry, Blair. <laughs> Does one lose a double dare? I don't know. <laughs> oh. There is a saying, if you've never heard it, that there's a reason that we were created with two ears and only one mouth, uh, implying that we'd be well served to spend maybe a little more time listening and a little less time yakking. And I'd say that, you know, uh, to some degree in the science of mind, we, we agree with that. Our teaching really, we emphasize the creative nature of our thoughts, of our thinking. You know, that our, if our predominant thinking is positive, if we have a very optimistic view of ourselves and life in general and people, we have very positive experiences of life. And if we tend to look at negatively upon ourselves, the world out there, life itself, then our life tends to be filled with a lot of negativity. The only place we really have dominion is over our own consciousness, is the realm of our thoughts and beliefs. And a lot of the time, our minds are just chatting away. Did you notice if you were here for the 10 minutes of meditation, how many times you had to catch yourself, you know, wandering off into some thought pattern and then having to bring the attention back to the breath? Um, you know, that, that mind wants to continually uh, offer us opinions about ourselves, about others, about the world, about life. And this inner chatter, these, these thoughts and opinions are based on the beliefs and perceptions that we've adopted over the course of our lives. And a good portion of the time, I don't think we're even conscious of the chatter that's going on. We're not really mindful of what we're thinking, how we're perceiving things. We're just letting those perceptions, those inner thoughts and responses drive our reactions, how we go about life. And that's why in virtually every spiritual tradition and certainly in ours, we promote some version of quiet time, some time of meditation, and contemplation, time where we can start to pay attention to what's going on in our inner world and take dominion over, over that world. If we don't like the way we're thinking and feeling, well, guess what? We can change that. Our philosophy is all about that. We can change our belief. We can change our thoughts and adopt ones that are more life-affirming to have a better experience of life. Last week, I had offered us the exercise of uh, when we're experiencing any form of negative, negativity, when we become aware of that, to just pause and ask ourselves, you know, what negative thought are we projecting onto this moment? What, what negative perception are we projecting that's creating a negative experience for us that we might be able to change? And that, just that very act of pausing to notice what we might be thinking, to contemplate, is there a different way I could see this? Is a different perception I might adopt? That requires a moment of silence, a moment of being mindful. Uh, the French mathematician, inventor, and theologian, Blaise Pascal, back in the 1600s, said, all humanity's problems stem from man's inability to sit quietly in a room alone. That was back in the 1600s. Can you imagine what he'd think today when every moment we're you know, distracted by some device you know, playing background music all the time, uh, you know, just always um, stimulating ourselves with different sounds. And you know, the realm of psychology has promoted this idea of also, you know, getting still, just observing our inner responses. In uh, an article I read uh, from a magazine 
by a, an article by a psychologist talking about that silence helps us to live consciously. It can let us know if something doesn't feel right by putting us in touch with our body and emotions. Silence can increase self-awareness, self-compassion, improve our decision-making skills with improved mental clarity. And as silence helps us to be more mindful, mindfulness is the first step in healing. It's being able to turn toward and acknowledge our thoughts and feelings, such as inadequacy, sadness, anger, confusion, and to approach it from a spirit of openness and curiosity. And you know, this idea from psychology, we, we would be 100% behind that in our teaching. You know, that's, that's the first step in healing. We can address rather than try to stifle those difficult feelings, those challenging feelings. We can look at them and see what's going on underneath and what belief patterns we could change to create different feelings, different responses. Psychology reminds us that uh, silence can enhance our conversations. By choosing silence, you'll naturally listen more and others have the opportunity to share more, which enhances our relationships. And it's a tool for increased emotional regulation because silence can be the space between a feeling and a response. It's what can allow us to pause, decide how we want to respond rather than react. We can take a silent pause to choose our response calmly and wisely. So, okay, there are all these great benefits to silence, and I think probably as you're listening to this, if you're listening to this, um, you're, you're probably recognizing, yeah, I, I get that, but why do we avoid the silence? I mean, as I said, Blaise Pascal was talking about people hundreds of years ago. I think we probably avoid it even more today. And, you know, part of the reason, I believe, is that the silence isn't always comfortable. When we encourage you to adopt a meditation practice, I think a lot of people avoid it because they think they're doing it wrong because they're sitting down and getting still and they're not always experiencing bliss. When we get silent, when we become aware of our inner world, well, some of that inner world is filled with uncomfortable thoughts and feelings. And I don't know if you've noticed, but our society, our, the world today, doesn't deal very well with discomfort. You know, we've come up, and I'm not against this, you know, I praise modern medicine for the ways that they've come up with addressing pain management. But, you know, you want to manage pain after you understand what the pain is about and also see if you can address the root cause. But we found so many ways to subdue pain and discomfort. So it's something that we really don't deal with well. And I, I love the analogy one of my uh, teachers in school of ministry came up with that I've shared before, but I think it's so perfect of the way we deal with pain and discomfort is imagine you're driving on the freeway and the oil light comes on on your car. So you know what to do, right? You're gonna pull over at the first opportunity you can. You're gonna go pop the hood, look under the hood, find the wire that's attached to that you know, oil light indicator, pull the wire so the oil light indicator goes out, and then you're gonna go on about your business. Not particularly effective way of addressing that, is it? And yet, isn't that a lot of how we want to deal with pain, how we deal with it? Just try to push it, suppress it, not deal with it at all. Here's the thing, though. As we practice regular periods of silence, if we develop a practice of regular periods of silence, of meditation, we can develop that compassionate observer in ourselves so that we can more compassionately watch what's going on. So when we move into the silence and 
we're starting to notice that there's some, um, some underlying feeling of discontent or whatever, the compassionate observer can observe that. And it doesn't mean that the feelings don't come up, but there's this part of us that's washing, watching it with love and compassionate compassion. And gradually, we're able to watch those thoughts and feelings and not be hooked by them, not be driven by them, not be so engaged by them. We come to realize that those thoughts and feelings don't define us, that we can begin to address them. We can look at what's going on and see, well, what, what is it that I'm needing to know here? How am I denying the truth of my oneness with God? How am I denying the presence of God in the world and others? And as we gain that practice of compassionately watching and not getting hooked by negative thoughts and feelings, then we can also go deeper. So we know or we profess that God is at the center of everything, right? Don't you hear that all the time? God is all there is. God is in every moment. God is right there in that moment, even when we are feeling discomfort. The chatter that's going on on the surface, if we go deeper, we can ask ourselves, what's the impulse for good deep below all of this chaotic chatter? We've all heard the passage from Psalms that says, be still and know that I am God. God is right there. If we allow ourselves to start with that compassionate observer that sees you know, what kind of discomfort is happening and then go deeper, we can discover that behind the resentment is an impulse for collaboration that isn't occurring. We can see, feel the potential for that collaboration. We can realize, oh, there's this energy of collaboration in me that's trying to come forth. Behind the herd is an impulse for love that might not have been expressed in a situation, but that love is there at the center of our being, seeking a greater knowingness and experience of itself. Behind the shame that we might be feeling is an impulse to make good of, if we've done something that's hurt someone, to, to make good of it. That's the impulse of love. We can find our way back to the core that is good. It's always there. But it takes a practice of just being able to get still and be quiet and watch. And when uncomfortable things come up, watch them with compassion, give them the space and consciousness to dissipate, just let that energy flow, and then go deeper to see what's, what's behind all of this, what's the good that's trying to birth itself in the situation. I remember years back working one time, it only took one time, this woman I think had a very powerful intention, um, but she talked to me about how she was really resisting meditation, that it had been so uncomfortable for her. I guess she had had some major falling out with her sister. I don't know what it was about. But every time she sat down to meditate, she would start off relaxing and letting the body relax. And then she said all this anger would come up, this anger and these feelings of betrayal that she had experienced with you know, what happened with her sister. And so I just asked her in our time together, I said, let's get still right now. I gave her some time to just go into the silence. And I actually directed her to, so try and bring your awareness to these thoughts about your sister. And so we gave her some time. And then as a, she indicated to me that the thoughts and the feelings were coming up, I just let her reminded her, I said, these are just thoughts, they're just feelings, let them come up, relax, let them flow, which she did. And then when I asked her, what is your heart wanting to experience that's missing in this situation? That question brought her deep down to feel that deep vibration of that energy of mutual respect 
love, understanding. And so when she came out of that, that experience, you know, she explained that she could see that deep down it was an impulse for good, that whether or not her sister changed, because we were clear about the fact that we weren't there to change her sister. Certainly, we were going to open to the possibilities and that love lived in her sister as much as anywhere else, but that whether or not her sister changed, that part of her that was a vibration of love and understanding and respect was intact. And if she couldn't experience it with her sister, which I believe the situation did resolve itself over time, but she understood that that part of her was intact and she would be able to experience it in some other way. And that, I know that one experience shifted her whole experience of going into the silence. I, you know, over the years heard of the meditations that she would go to, the retreats that she would go to, how much she had embraced the silence. And I loved, I um, looked at some notes I'd taken because I just loved the way she put it to me she, when she said that she didn't experience bliss in every meditation. She was very clear about that, that sometimes she would be sitting with discomfort but she said, you know, in those moments when I'm sitting and I notice this discomfort, it's like something maybe I hadn't been paying attention to, but that was trying to get my attention. It's almost like, you know, when you suddenly notice that you're thirsty, that you've been thirsty for a while and you finally go and quench your thirst. She said, it's like when I am able to sit with that and notice it and be compassionate, I can just start to create the space for that energy to, to dissipate. And... She said, there are times when I can start off with discomfort by, by going down to what's the deeper intention for good, that she said, I can go from starting off uncomfortable to absolute peace and bliss. And that's what happens when we allow ourselves the time in the silence to sit with compassion and observe our inner world. And so my invitation for us this week is to take time every day. And if you haven't um, done so yet or um, continue to do so if you've been doing it, join us at 8 a.m. for our morning meditation. It's such a, a wonderful experience. But just find ways during the day to get still, to listen, to just take a breath. Maybe choose to just listen and not necessarily offer your opinion sometime in a conversation. Just listen and notice that part of you that can just listen and understand with compassion, give your full attention. Just take those times to just pause, be silent, and listen, notice. It's in that silence that we can notice the discordant thoughts and feelings and give them space to dissipate. If you're feeling some discomfort, take a breath. Let it flow. Just let it flow. We can address them with our spiritual practices. But it's also in that silence that we can go deeper to hear what... Ernest Holmes described as the still, small voice of the divine. For you, it might just be a feeling, you know, just a, a gut feeling. But it's something there that's always there to reveal its nature of goodness to us and through us. And so I'm going to invite you right now to take a moment to turn inward. So let's just take this moment to get still. I invite you to watch the pattern of your breath. Allow yourself to relax, to settle in. Just watching the breath. And 
and take a moment to scan your body, your physical body, the body of emotions, and notice if there's any discomfort anywhere. And if you find something, just allow yourself to observe that feeling with interest and compassion. Don't chase it away. Know that it came to pass. Just relax. Watch it compassionately. giving it room to dissipate. And now go deeper and ask, what am I seeking to experience? Peace, love, joy, comfort. Feel the vibration of that quality below the discomfort. Available to come forth from within you. In this stillness, in this silence, feel the presence of God as that quality. Always there to be called forth. And so I invite you to set your intention to release any resistance to being still, to being in the silence. And follow that up by setting your intention to embrace a greater sense of the empowerment that you gain through sitting in the silence. gaining dominion over your inner world. And from this place, I invite you to join me in knowing the truth about some of the worldly challenges that we face as we move through our human experience, knowing absolutely that God is ever present in every moment, in every being, in every situation, right here, right now, in me, around me, in each and every person gathered for this service this evening, in every being everywhere, knowing that that, that essence of God's nature is what animates each and every one of us let us know together the truth that that nature of the divine is changeless, birthless, deathless. And so for those who are experiencing any challenges with change, whether it be some change going on in their lives right now, change of loved ones passing on into the next dimension, we remember that that changeless nature of God leaves us always interconnected. We can never be separated from it, from one another in this one life. Let us know the truth that any sense of loss from a human experience is simply an opportunity to know the essence of that experience, God's nature in some new way. Let us know for those who are experiencing any kind of dis-ease or discord in the midst of this pandemic that has so much of our worldly attention for all those who are feeling any kind of illness, that the nature of the divine in each of us is perfect, whole, and complete. There's a pattern of perfect health at the center of each and every one of us. And as we open to knowing that divine intelligence of God is present, we absolutely open to 
the perfect right healing, the revealing of that health through the perfect channels. We open to the pathways for healing, be it through a vaccine, through other kinds of physical cures, be it through any process that awakens us to the truth of that vibration of well-being that is always there at the center of each and every one of us. Let us absolutely know that this nature of God is an impulse to give of itself unto itself, that we are all imbued with qualities of God that we are here to give in our own unique ways. So for anyone that is experiencing any kind of challenge of not feeling fully expressed, we know that there's that perfect right place that is revealed for them to give of themselves uniquely and creatively and to be absolutely well appreciated, compensated, valued. We absolutely know that the nature of this one is infinite and therefore there can be no lack or limitation in this vibration of God. And as we know that truth, we see a dissolution of any experience of lack and limitation and an opening up to the abundant nature of spirit so that if it's in the area of love, we see ourselves more capable of giving and receiving love, being more creative and celebrating the creativity of others in finances, opening to that inflow to be supported beyond our needs and to give generously back. And I absolutely know, and let us join together in knowing that that nature of the one is pure love and that that vibration of love is what is most true and real about each of us. And as we know this, we see an expansion of that love vibration toward ourselves, toward everyone in the world, holding everything in compassion and love and feeling that greater connection to the love of God. And knowing that that love is always an impulse for good, let us honor it by setting our intentions for greater good in silence. And so whether these intentions are for greater for good for ourselves, for loved ones, or situations in the world, we know we are feeling the impulse of God for more and more of its nature to be felt and realized and expressed in creation. And so we know that God is right there and that good is being revealed in all these situations. And together we declare, I accept these truths for myself and all beings everywhere. And from this place, we just absolutely bless our church. We bless all churches everywhere, synagogues, temples, mosques, ashrams, all paths to God, knowing that all paths lead us to the same God, the same truth. And so with a heart filled with gratitude for knowing this truth, I release this word knowing it is so, I let it be, and so it is. Together we say, amen. So this is a time in our service for affirmative giving. 
You should be seeing a link that will take you to our donation page so you can uh, make your donations online. If it's not showing up or you're having any challenges with that, it, you can go to the website. It's nhcrs.org forward slash give, and that takes you straight to the donation page. And of course, uh, we always accept your checks that you are mailing in. Thank you for those of you who continue to do that. And we'll also be here for 30 minutes after service if you'd like to call in and make a donation with a credit or debit card over the phone. But thank you so much. We so appreciate the ways you continue to support us so we can still continue to be here and do church together. So with that, let's hold our gifts to our hearts as we say together. From the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. Thank you. Ah, so as we bring our service to a close, I want to remind you that uh, if you would like to have prayer with a practitioner after service, that that is available to you on Zoom. If you join, if you're on Facebook Live, just join us on Zoom, and we can connect you uh, with a practitioner for a prayer one-on-one -on -one in a private breakout room, and. Uh, if you'd like to submit your prayer requests to us, just send an email to prayer at nhcrs.org, or you can call the church office and uh, ask for ministry of prayer or select option four if you get the recording, and you can leave us a message letting us know what you would like to be supported in prayer for. And uh, those requests are mailed out, emailed out to our practitioners, so you'll have 60 people uh, supporting you in prayer. So please take advantage of that. Um, I want to start off by thanking everyone out there in our virtual world who's supporting us this evening. Thank you, thank you, Melissa Allen, for the support week after week on Facebook Live. Um, to our Zoom hosts this evening, Mark Kroll and Brenda Jordan, thank you. Uh, to Gail Pallott for um, being our pulpit support person who's holding vigil, and Christine Crawford, who uh, is holding vigil for us this evening. A reminder again, donations uh, can be made over the phone uh, for up to 30 minutes after service, so we'll be here till about 8.15. And uh, let's see, what other now? Oh, I haven't, see, I've thanked all of you out there, and I didn't thank those of you who are in here. Oh, I need to pause. Get silent. Okay, I'm back. <laughs>
Adam, <laughs> thank you, as always, for the beautiful support, making sure we were seen and heard, to Alex and Blair, our tech team here, to make sure we're uh, live with you on Zoom, to Doreen, who's running the camera for us and who'll be taking your calls after service, to our wonderful musical support. Thank you. Thank you so much, Gia. And, um, Sam, it's, I'd, like, I'd like to hear you sing behind that mask, Gia. <laughs> so, oh, we have so much fun here, <laughs> the handful of us in the sanctuary. Um, and of course, thank you to all of you who have tuned in. So appreciate it. Uh, next week, my topic will be Think Big, Start Small. Um, and let's see, we invite you to stay informed and up to date through our website and weekly um, newsletters and monthly newsletters and e-blasts. So if you aren't getting those, and there's so much that we come up with, new ideas, things to do here at the church, um, sign up for those on our website, nhcrs.org. Um, one of the things you would have heard about is our 2020 Abundance Workshop with Dr. Mark. That's starting this coming Monday, August 3rd. It'll be for five weeks, so it'll run through the 31st. And you can uh, register for that today on our website. And it will be, uh, they'll be using the book, The Art of Abundance, 10 Rules for a Prosperous Life by Dennis Merritt Jones. And the cost is responsible giving. And you're asked to please read the first two chapters in the book before the class, the first class. And we have a big event coming up a week from Friday. Grace Notes for God, a musical feast, concert, and fundraiser. So that'll be Friday evening, August 7th at 7.30 p.m. Tickets are available on our website. What's the website again? nhcrs.org. And we really hope you'll join us for this special event. It's a chance, you know, we're not having gourmets for God, but we're, we're going to give you a musical feast. I love that <laughs> Sam and Diet came out with that idea. Um, and that's an opportunity to have a, you know, enjoy a wonderfully entertaining concert and support your church community. Performers will be Mary Hyland, Jamie Lula, Susan Edwards Martin, Tina Meeks, Joanne O'Brien, Dean Regan, and our wonderful Diane Vincent as MC and Sam as our musical director. So you know it's gonna be a wonderful evening. We hope, hope you'll enjoy, uh, join us for that. Um, after the service, please join us on our Zoom, Zoom virtual patio. And that's before and after all of our services. So 20 minutes before you can get on and connect with your uh, fellow congregants and so we hope you'll stay online for a bit afterwards to visit. And I'll be there to have a little reception line. And just a reminder that our teens meet on Sunday at 9.45 and Wednesday, 7.30 p.m. The men's group meets every Sunday from 11 to 11.30 a.m. And we have our Zoom meditation that I talked about every morning, Monday through Saturday at 8 a.m. All of that information is where? nhcrs.org. I swear, the meaning of life is there. So <laughs> please visit this website often. Um, and if anyone doesn't have the number to call the church, it's 818-762-7566. With that, thank you again for joining us. Let's turn inward one more time. Giving thanks once again for all the ways that that one life, that one power, that one presence has made itself felt, known, and realized throughout our time together. I absolutely know that each of us has been blessed through this experience, that we have come to a greater awareness of the power that comes from just taking that moment to be still, that can lead us to the remembrance, the knowingness of our oneness with God. I know we take that awareness with us into our lives. So it continues to bless us as we go forward and it ripples out into the world. And so for this and so much more, 
I give thanks and release this word, knowing it is so. I let it be, and so it is. Together we say, Amen. Let's join in song one more time. Thank you. 